Good morning. I'm Father Rob Slocum. I'm priest in partnership with the Church of the Ascension, Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And this Sunday morning is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and we're here to celebrate morning prayer. We'll be using the Book of Common Prayer beginning at page 76. And church members, I hope you have the copy of the order of service that Sally Razor has so helpfully prepared. So we're ready to begin. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful Lord, God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouths mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, Come let us adore, adore him. him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Now we will uh, say our psalm appointed for today. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done in this, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, Oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. 
I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a victorious song from our life here in our home chapel. Um, we'll uh, now say together Canticle 11, uh, found in the prayer book at page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and, and the, the glory, glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For, for behold, darkness, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through this, his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now say together, Canticle 14, page 90. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. 
and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, I'm going to read the next lesson. It's a reading from the Gospel of John, not the Gospel as in our Eucharistic celebration, but it's a reading from the Gospel of John. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. For when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already... There is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, 
you receive the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> so, by way of homily for this set of readings and this day, this occasion, this fifth Sunday of Lent, let me say that a central theme in our faith is nothing less than life out of death. Life stronger than death. Love that conquers death. Love that enables us to connect beyond all that death would take away. And of course, that in Christ, in God, in faith, we have resurrection life, newness of life, life that's stronger than anything that would diminish us. Life stronger than death. And so that theme comes up again and again in the readings that we have for today in our Old Testament prophecy and our passages we hear the, the dry bones drawn together, animated, literally moving, alive, life out of death. And then again in the gospel passage, uh, Jesus brings Lazarus back. He's been dead four days. And, uh, uh, he hears the warning, don't, don't open the tomb, it'll smell bad. But indeed, Jesus brings Lazarus back to mortal life. But his bringing Lazarus back to mortal life uh, is a sign and a symbol for us of what we are to find in Christ's resurrection life. And it's also a reminder of hope. And hope is a very important thing for us, especially in the time of this pandemic. That means we're celebrating our Sunday service in this way instead of together in our parish and breaking the bread and sharing the cup of the Eucharist together at our altar for all who will come and join us in that place. And that in the midst of all the threats and worries and losses that we face during this time, you know, businesses that have had to close at least temporarily and people unable to work and isolated from their friends and isolated from others, worried about illness, worried about what may come next, that the reminder is that the faith, the Christ, is always bringing literally the best out of the worst. I mean, what is worse than Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, crucified for trumped up wrong charges, crucified, put to death on a cross, and yet that's not the end of the story, that his life and our resurrection life comes out of that victory. So in this moment, this very significant moment in Jesus's earthly ministry, when he returns Lazarus to mortal life, we find a sign and symbol and reminder of the faith that we share and the hope that we cherish that in Christ, Life overcomes death. In Christ, hope overcomes despair. In Christ, our togetherness and the love that we share proves more powerful than anything that would diminish us. And that in us, we have the light, the hope, the resurrection of Christ. So our service will continue with the Apostles' Creed page 96. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was I conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended, descended to the dead. dead. On the, the third day, day he rose again. again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we're ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we'll have our prayers of the people found in the prayer book at page 385 or on your service order. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, for all of our, our bishops, for Bishop Mark, Bishop of Lexington, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially William Hargrave. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those on our parish intercessory list. Betty, Chuck, Jim, Norm, Mabel, Virginia, Ryan, Pat, DeFord, Faye, Cindy, Suzanne, Patty, Sue, Tanya, Bonnie, Michael, Kenny, Judy, Shirley, Dwight, Gail, Candy, Kathy, Susanna, Lee, Mike, Heather, Teresa, Thelma, Walker, Gina, Corbin, Jessica, Patrick, Dana, Lisa, Robin, Bill, Brenda, Josh, Anna, Christy, Lance, Ron, Steve, Danny, Beverly, Luke, Abby, Cynthia, Brenda, Diane, Pete, Jeff, Debbie, Anthony, James, Barbara, and Dawn, as well as all those who suffer. We also remember those in the armed forces, both at home and abroad. We offer special prayers 
for healthcare workers and all of those in the front lines of serving our society, helping people in need, whether clerks in grocery stores or people helping to repair cars on roadsides, but all people who are reaching out for others during this time. And I ask your prayers for those on our diocesan and intercessory prayer list, the Church of the Resurrection, Jessamine County, Nicholasville, uh, the Reverend Margaret Shanks, Rector, and the Reverend Deacon Kenneth Pierce. I ask your thanksgiving for the birthdays of Julia Waller and Horton Stuhl. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And now we'll say together the general thanksgiving at page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks for all your, your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be upon you now and all you love, both now and always. Amen. Amen.